Japan gets India and Australia as allies in its new front against China. And it has a plan to kick China out of the supply chain. Xi Jinping's blind expansionist policy is coming back to bite China as the world is in no mood to let China off the hook this time. The past few months have seen India, Australia and Japan already taking a decidedly anti-China stance as China's aggressive behaviour has enraged the trio. The Troika understands that China's strength lies in its standing in the global supply chain and hence have started taking steps to end China's dominance. India, Japan and Australia now have initiated discussions on launching a trilateral supply chain resilience initiative or the SCRI to reduce China's foothold in the global supply chain. In the backdrop of China's aggressive political and military posturing, India, Japan and Australia are jointly countering the Chinese challenge as the Troika had started deliberations to launch a trilateral supply chain resilience initiative to reduce the dependency on China. Economic Times has reported that the initiative was first mooted by Japan and is now taking shape. Japan has pressed on the urgency of the initiative on India with dates being worked out to hold the first meeting of the commerce and trade ministers of the three countries by next week as Tokyo is keen for the initiative to take off by November. The Economic Times reports India has shed its non-alignment strategy and is seriously moving forward with the proposal in the backdrop of the tense border standoff between India and China. India is determined to emerge as an alternative to China and hence it appears to have decided to become a bigger part of the global supply chain. The main objectives of the initiative are to attract FDI and make the Indo-Pacific region into an economic powerhouse by improving the supply chain resilience across the region while building a mutually complementary relationship among the partner countries. India has been planning to kick China out of the supply chain ever since the Galwan Valley clash. Following the border scuffle, India amended its FDI norms to restrict Chinese investments and has also introduced SOPs to attract global investors to compete with China and offer itself as an alternative. The Modi government is in fact even likely to announce the final guidelines for its production-linked incentive scheme worth 6,940 crore Indian rupees, which is meant to augment domestic production of active pharmaceutical ingredients. In fact, the production-linked incentive scheme offers incentives to companies engaged in manufacturing mobile phones in India and it is a huge success as it has drawn huge interest from original equipment manufacturers like Samsung and Foxconn. The government had approved the PLI scheme in March as the government wants to reduce India's dependence on raw materials from China for the production of crucial antibiotics, anti-HIV drugs, vitamins and cardio medicine. The Modi government has also been hitting China hard in the tech sector. India recently banned 59 Chinese apps including TikTok and subsequently even freed the Indian cyberspace of their clones. Now New Delhi is deliberating upon the security risks posed by 275 other Chinese apps and even those which are minutely associated with China. China has thus been edged out of India's growing and high-value app market. Japan too has upped the ante and is pushing its companies to relocate from China to Japan and other Southeast Asian countries. The Shinzo Abe government earmarked 2.2 billion US dollars to help its manufacturers shift their production out of China. So far, a total of 87 companies have already signed up with Japan's Ministry of Trade, Economy and Industry to move their manufacturing units out of China with 57 moving back to Japan and 30 to different other Southeast Asian nations like Vietnam, Thailand and Laos. Australia, on the other hand, recently changed its foreign investment rules, which gives greater approval powers to the Foreign Investment Review Board to curtail opportunistic takeovers of struggling businesses amid increasing national security risk. Unlike the new plan, the FIRB would have to approve all investments in a sensitive national security business, regardless of the value of the deal. 
The sensitive national security business is a direct reference to China that tried leveraging its economic might in the Australian market to its own benefit and bend Australia according to its wishes. The trilateral supply chain resilience initiative between Japan, India and Australia is perfect. It can emerge as a credible alternative to China and as which the concerns of companies and economies that have concerns about the global supply chain that can get derailed due to China's aggressive political posturing. 